In this video, we're going to be showing you titration techniques that will allow you to get both accurate and precise results from this particular analytical procedure. Although the titration in this video is an acid-base one, the techniques will work equally well on any type of titration. First, you should set up the apparatus as shown here. It is very important that the inside of the burette is scrupulously clean. The way to test this is to drain water from the burette and then make sure that no drops form on the inside. When the burette is clean, you should rinse it with several small portions of the titrating solution. You should do this with a small beaker that contains this solution. You can now fill the burette with titrant. You should also remove any air bubbles that may be in the tip of the burette. The easiest way to do this is just to open the stopcock fully and to give the tip a couple of taps with your finger. You should also touch the tip of the burette with the side of the waste beaker. This will remove any drops that might be hanging there. We now have to take our initial reading of the burette volume. We have to ensure that our eyes are perfectly perpendicular to the burette at the point of the meniscus. To do this, find a line on the burette that goes entirely around the circumference of the burette. Adjust your eyes so that the front of this line eclipses the rear. We will read the meniscus with the aid of a card with a colored tape on it. Hold the card at about a 45 degree angle from the meniscus. This will reflect light from above through the meniscus. The colored tape should be just below the meniscus. This will turn parts of the meniscus the same color as the tape. This greatly facilitates reading the burette to the nearest one hundredth of a milliliter. Take the reading at the bottom of the lowest thin red line in the meniscus. The reading here is 0 0.38 or maybe 0 0.39 milliliters. But as you can see, we can easily read it to the nearest 0 0.01 milliliters. A good titration should have a volume of around 15 to 20 milliliters, so we can add most of that volume in one large portion. Open the stopcock fully and allow 10, 12 milliliters to drain in. Keep an eye on the solution. You'll notice that the indicator color, the, the pink color that develops, will occupy a larger and larger volume. After shutting off the stopcock, mix the solution thoroughly. The pink color should now disappear. The solution should turn clear. If it doesn't, that means you've actually gone past the end point, and you'll have to start the titration over with a fresh sample. As we continue our titration, we'll be slowing down the addition of titrant, but we'll still be adding drops quite rapidly. Notice how the left hand manipulates the stopcock of the burette to control the flow. The right hand mixes the solution quite rapidly. The objective is to mix the drops faster than they're being added. The persistence of indicated color in the solution allows us to judge when we're getting very close to the end point. When we are very close to the end point, it is time to add single drops and even half drops to the solution. You should adjust the stopcock so that only small movements turn it on and off. Dislodge any drops or partial drops that cling to the tip of the burette by touching them to the side of the beaker. Rinse them down with your wash bottle. In fact, this is the exact technique we used to add a half a drop to the solution when we're very close to the end point. Suspend the half drop from the tip of the burette, touch to the side of the Erlenmeyer, and, and then rinse it down with your wash bottle. If you look carefully, you'll notice as we approach the end point that the pink color persists for a longer and longer time and occupies a larger and larger volume in the solution. The end point is reached when there is any faint color that persists upon mixing. Don't forget to write down the volume at this point. So there you have our end point and that concludes this video on titration techniques.